Let's start by taking some measurements. I'm measuring from the base of Butterball's neck to around where the end of his belly is. Make sure you leave space in the back so that they can go to the bathroom while they're wearing the sweater without dirtying it up. That's measurement number one. Measurement number two is right around here. You want to take the circumference of basically the chunkiest part of their belly and then jot that measurement down as well. So here's a recap of what I got. The length across the top of his back I got 15 inches and then the belly circumference 24 inches. The fabric I'm using for this project is polyester fleece which works out great because it's machine washable, it's soft, it's warm and it stretches so it's going to allow the dog to move around freely. Notice that the fleece stretches a lot more in one direction than it does in the other. So we want to make sure that the circumference measurement we took off the dog is what's cut along the stretchiest part of the fabric. It's the same like when we make clothes for ourselves that we always want the stretch of the fabric going from left to right across the body. Well that's what we're doing for this project as well. So in this direction I've cut it 15 the exact measurements that I took off the dog. This is the length from his neck down to the base of his belly, 15 inches that way, and then 24 inches for the circumference, which has been cut along the stretchiest grain of the fabric. Once you have the main body part of the sweater cut out, we want to figure out what's the pretty side and the ugly side of the fabric. So if you tug on one raw edge with fleece, it will automatically curl towards the ugly or wrong side of the fabric. So I know that that's this side. So flip it so that it's pretty side facing up, and then we're going to fold it across lengthwise, matching up these two shorter raw edges here. Then you just put some pins, and this you can see we're making a tube now. This is where the dog's body is going to be. So make sure that you've cut that circumference measurement along the stretchiest part of the fabric so they can fit in there. Now we're going to match up these raw edges, put a few pins, and using a straight stitch, you're going to stitch right along that edge. Once that seam is sewn, you want to reach in there and flip it so now that the right side or the pretty side of the fabric is facing out and then set this piece aside. Now let's work on the neck and to figure out the measurements of this piece of fabric, let me tell you how I came up with it. First notice this is a lot wider than the neck part. So in the neck the dog is usually smaller so we needed to taper off a little bit so it's nice and snug, kind of like a turtleneck, right? And so to do that, here's what I did with the measurements. I took my circumference measurement, right, the one that we cut along the stretchier side of the main body part of the sweater, I took that and I subtracted 8 inches. So I had 24, subtracted 8, and I ended up with 16. So that's what I cut out here. And again, that longest measurement needs to be cut on the stretchiest part of the fabric because this is going to be going around the neck of the dog and it has to stretch, okay? So again, the circumference measurement minus 8 inches, and that was 16, so I cut that across the stretchiest part of the fabric. For the short side here, you can really do whatever you want. It depends on how thick you want the neck part to be. I like it about 3 inches. So what I did was cut the piece of fabric at 7. It's going to be folded in half and then remember some of it is going to be taken up as well in the seam allowance. So my piece ended up measuring 16 inches by 7 inches. Now like we did for the other piece, tug on one edge, you'll see it curl to the wrong side, lay it pretty side facing up, fold it so the shorter raw edges are touching, pin it, and again the same exact thing you did with the larger piece, use a straight stitch and stitch right along that edge. Once that seam is sewn, you want to open it up and then fold it in half like I'm showing you here. We basically want to meet up both raw edges so that they're all together and what that does is expose the pretty side of the fabric towards the outside and you have what is going to be the turtleneck part of your sweater. I'll show you here what it'll look like finished once we attach it to the body of our sweater. At this point, I like to zigzag stitch together the raw edges of just the neckline because it's bulky fabric we're working with and we have two raw edges there to attach to another one. So it just makes it easier if you stitch them together first so you don't have any of those edges moving on you. Now locate that center seam on the main body piece and the same thing for the neckline. And what you're going to do here is basically we're going to quarter each one of these tubes, right? So that seam line is one, I don't have to put a pin there, directly across from it though I put a pin and then on both folded edges on the side I put another one. So I'm just using these pins to mark off a quarter mark on each one of my fabric pieces. You're going to do that for the neck and then also for the main body piece. So here's one, we have the center seam already. Directly across from it, place the pin to mark the other side and then on both sides again. Now making sure that both of my pieces are with the pretty sides facing out, we're going to start matching up these seams. The center seam on the neckline, with the center seam of the main body piece and then we're going to match up each one of the pins as well. So here we have center seam to center seam on each and I'll place a pin through all those layers 
then make your way around and find the next pin on each one of your fabric pieces. So here's the next one. This pin needs to match up with this one. I can remove one, remove the second one, and pin through all the layers. So I know that they're matching and they're right where they need to be, okay? One quarter off the other with the other quarter off the larger piece of fabric means that each one of these fabric pieces have been equally distributed. So we know that if we stretch one out to stitch it to the other, it's all going to match up nicely. Again, I'll show you here. Both pins, they need to be matched up at the same spot. I'm going to remove one of them, take off the other, and then use it to pin through all the layers, the neck and the main body piece, okay? Now you can see the neckline is a lot smaller than the body piece, so this is all I have to work with here. So this tells me that when I'm sewing, I need to pull on the neckline only, not on the main body piece. Remember, this was all cut on the stretchiest part of the fabric, so if you pull on any of these, it's definitely going to stretch. And it may look like a lot of fabric to accommodate, but trust me, this stuff stretches really well. You can see that when I stretch out the neckline, it already matches up. So that's what you need to do at the sewing machine while you stitch. Go from pin to pin, stitching just the neckline so it matches perfectly with the larger body piece. To stitch this up, go ahead and remove your extension table or the supply case on your machine to expose the free arm. Also make sure that you're using at least a 9014 needle. We're working with fleece and a lot of bulky layers here, okay? So you definitely don't want to break a needle. So what I like to do is actually to work with the neckline part towards the bottom, touching the feed dogs. I just find that it's easier for me to tug on it when it's that way and I can keep an eye on the body piece that I am not supposed to be stretching a little bit better if it's on top. So notice, I have all this fabric to work with right on top and now un from underneath, I'm pulling on the neckline fabric. And if you want, you can help it by pulling it a little bit on the back as it's stitched through, okay? So don't pull the top fabric, just tug on the bottom one, which is the neckline, and continue to do that all the way around from pin to pin until you make your way around. Now we gotta make the leg opening, so find the side that has the seam running down the center, and that's where we want the openings to be, because this seam needs to run down the center of the dog's chest, okay? So like you see on this one here. Now to do that, one thing you wanna keep in mind is that you don't wanna make these circles too big. Because this is the stretchiest side of the fabric, remember this is going left to right on the dog's body, these holes will stretch, and they will stretch a lot. So I suggest cutting the holes smaller than you think you need to have them and then seeing how it works when you try it on the dog, okay? So what I do is actually fold this up so that that center seam is on the edge, towards the bottom edge here towards me. And then I'm going to make some marks so I only have to cut one circle out and I know that it's going to be symmetrical and cut right through to the other side, okay? So to do that... I came in about a, an inch or an inch and a quarter in from the edge. Obviously, if you have a larger dog with a broader chest, you want to adjust these measurements accordingly, okay? This is for a four-month-old pit bull puppy, and so I'm coming in about an inch or so in this way, right here, and then about, I think, three inches or so down from the neck, the bottom of the turtleneck part, okay? So just eyeball it. Since they stretch, you can kind of work it in there with their legs and you'll have a little wiggle room. Just know that, you know, you don't want to make it way too close up to the neck because that's not where their legs are and you don't want to have it right in the middle of their belly either. So just eyeball it and if you want, you can take some other measurements as well to get it more accurately. So measure around something small and circular. Without moving the fabric, I pin around the edges to keep everything steady cut inside the circle, go through both layers, and then cut that out. Once you remove your pins, you'll see that you have two perfectly made leg openings right in your sweater. Now because the fleece doesn't fray, we're gonna keep it super simple and leave it just like that. I don't have to hem the leg openings or anything, but you can hem the bottom if you want to. You see for this one, I just folded it under and zigzag stitched it down. On this one, I'm just gonna leave it as is because it's not gonna fray again. It doesn't look as professionally made, but it's still going to serve the same functional purpose either way, okay? You can also embellish this. Fleece comes in tons of different fabric prints, but if you're using solids, you may want to embellish it with something like this, which is a superhero emblem that I did with the letter B for Butterball. And so I'm going to show you how to do that now. So here I have a plain one that's just done in blue, 
and I've actually provided you all with the free downloadable template for this little uh, superhero emblem and you can click on the link in the description box below to download the PDF then all you have to do is print it out cut it out and then use it as a template to cut out your little superhero emblem out of your fleece fabric and then I free handed a letter B for butterball make sure that you pin well around exactly where you're going to be placing this I like to use a zigzag stitch and just zigzag stitch all around everything basically your machine appliquing this on and just take your time because the fleece is so bulky and it stretches as well it may take a little getting used to and that's it guys I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial if you did make sure you hit it with that thumbs up below share it across the different social media sites and don't forget to click open that description box I've included links on where you can find the same fleece I use for my project here and where you can download that superhero emblem Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click the link below in order to find out more.